Pray for Brother Terry as he comes to do my most of all this. Pray for the lost. Any care, pray for me. Father, we come on before you, God. We thank you for this and our opportunity to come out together. Yes. We worship our God and praise our Savior. Thank you. Father, we just pray. I pray you'll just help us all. Won't you know? Just to be here in one mind. <coughs> Lord, God, that the Spirit can work and let us. Yes. God, may we can see somebody's heart in this and somebody say here tonight. Or maybe somebody listening. Whatever it be, God. Lord, I just pray you'll touch Brother Terry. God, we'll just give him an unction. And God, will give him that that we need to hear. And Father, help us to take it, God, and use it to draw up nigh to you, God. And Lord, I pray you'll bless this office to be a bill and I can have your will and your way, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Page 148. Page 148. <laughs> Somebody has a song on your heart, something you'd like to do for the Lord this evening. Don't everybody run at one time, but single file, single file. Hearts and minds clear this evening. All right, then we'll all. Then if nobody's got anything else on your on your heart, on your mind, we'll open our Bibles up. Look like at Revelation chapter number two. Revelations chapter number two. And, uh, when you find your place, you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Be much in prayer for us. Again, as we always say, we desire your prayers. Amen. Uh, we desire your prayers tonight because uh, without Him, without His help, we could do nothing. And even if we could do something, it wouldn't be much good. Amen. Bible says here in the feet, or in reference, I forgot you didn't know. In Revelations chapter number two, Revelation chapter number two and verse number one, the Bible says that under the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things saith he that, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works. 
thy labor, thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and ha thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them lies, and hast borne and ha hast pa uh, patience, and for my name's sake hast thou labors, hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen. Repent. Do the first works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Let's pray to every Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, to summon ourselves before thee. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity, God, just to be able to stand on this side of eternity. Now, Lord, I know that I don't have the message for tonight, but I know that you do. And I pray to your heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you'll help us to see what it is within this scripture. Lord, see what it is within this word. God, that you'd help us to understand tonight. Lord, I pray most of all, there's one here that does not know the three parts of sin. I pray tonight, dear God, that you get in before it's everlasting too late. Lord, for those that are standing close as hell, God, give them the word and the liberty to be able to come. God, I pray for those that are struggling and hurting, maybe backslidden, God. Got burdens on their heart, things they want to see and things they want to do. God, I pray that thy will be done in our life as well as theirs. Lord, I pray for our family, Lord. God, you know we've got family members, each one of us tonight, God, that need to need you. God, I pray they'll get saved before it's everlasting too late. We'll get us through the remainder of service. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus, bless your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 here we see that the Lord was writing and speaking unto the church that was at Ephesus there. Now, the church that was at Ephesus, they had had a good report. Amen. Uh, they went through, they'd done a lot of good things. They, 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 had, they had probably, a, if I was to look back and we was to relate this to today's time, they, uh, they probably had a lot of programs. Amen. Uh, uh, they probably had a lot of things going on. They had a lot of events in the church. Uh, uh, they probably had a good choir, amen. Uh, probably even had a good youth choir. Uh, probably even had some good leaders within the church. Uh, and a lot of things happening. Uh, not even been growing at the time. Uh, I was thinking here what the Bible tells us about the church of Ephesus. Uh, the Bible tells us there that they left their first love. Uh, now listen, I, I tell you, I don't think that uh, a lot of times when we read this, we think about how they just walked off and left God. Amen. Uh, but in my study and in, in my prayer and, look, and trying to understand what God was saying to the church of Ephesus, I don't think uh, that they just up and walked off and left God. Amen. Uh, I think like a lot of us and a lot of times uh, in our lives, things happen. Happen and this we just only realize how we got there. Amen. And I, uh, we'll wake up one day and just realize, hey, I'm a million miles from where I thought I was going to be. Amen. And I, I was thinking this afternoon, we studied a little bit. Of, uh, we went out on the lake today as well and uh, I was thinking about the water. And I got to thinking that uh, uh, I, I'm sure some of us have been, uh, uh, how many of us have been to, to, to actually be under the ocean? You raise your hands. I ain't going to show you your bad back. I bet you laid out of church. I just see that. I ain't going down. Amen. Look, I guarantee you a lot of us have been to the ocean. Now, I, some of us, we've been in the ocean. Now, how many of you that's been to the ocean, now, been in the ocean, now, and at some point, maybe multiple times, you've, you've been in the water. I, but I'll guarantee you, if you've got in the water very much, there's come a way, there's come a time now, that you probably thought you was going to drink. Guarantee it. Amen. Uh, if it hadn't, you ain't been in the water long enough. Because uh, I promise you, uh, 
If you get out there and you get in the water, I, I promise you there's going to be a wave to catch you off guard. You know why? Because you let down your guard. Now, when you first waded in, you first saw I first saw that ocean there. It's big. Hey, but you knew what was in it and you're scared to death that it might eat you. Amen? Hey, but you got a little more comfortable. You got a little more relaxed. And you eased out and you eased out. If you ever been to the ocean, I've been out there swimming in it all, and we're big, we're big water nuts on our side of the family. I, uh, you get out there, you get the wading and the playing, and the next thing you know, I, where you got in at is about a mile from where you are right now, because it's done carried you down the beach, amen. I, it's done carried you a little ways off. I, and you know what? I, I got to thinking about that in our very own spiritual life a lot of times. I, we'll get out there, and a lot of times when we first get started, or something, I, and we first get where we get where we're supposed to be with God, and we'll be on guard, amen. I, hey, we'll be on guard, we'll pay attention to the things that's going on. I, around about us uh, and the next thing we know uh, uh, we're getting a little more used to it uh, and we get a little more relaxed it's the same way in our church service uh, hey well, we've got some old shouting Baptists uh, we got some shouting sisters uh, hey we got some that used to sing uh, hey that don't even sing no more uh, we got some that used to shout but don't shout no more uh, why in the world do those things happen uh, it's because we drift from the place that we should be amen uh, I believe the church of Ephesus, uh, hey, when God began to speak, uh, and God began to write, the, had the letter wrote unto them, uh, they were in a place, uh, hey, they thought they were okay, uh, they thought they were doing the right thing, uh, they were going through the motions. Hey, but they walked off and forgot exactly what it was about. Amen. Hey, I tell you what, in our everyday life, it's important that we make sure hey, that we know that our day and our life, it's about Him. Amen. Look, we'll get up in the morning, we'll have to go to work, some of us. We'll have to put on our work shoes and work clothes and go off to work. Hey, but let me tell you, I'm glad God God's given us a day and give us the ability to work. He's given us a job to provide. But the day is still about Him. Amen. It's not to be about us. It's not about all our work, the things we've got to get done. Hey, if you don't get your job done today, hey, if you don't get it done tomorrow, hey, they might get somebody to replace you. Hey, but I can tell you one thing for certain. Hey, if you'll give it your all and trust God to get you through it and put God out where He belongs, I I promise you, they get rid of you, and God's got something better for you. Amen. 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 Too many times we get caught up and we get drifted away. Amen. Uh, <coughs> we'll end up in a place. Uh, here, here, the, here's some things that's wrong, man. I, if we if we get too lax, uh, we get too relaxed in a thing we're, in what we're doing. I tell people all the time. I said, you know, that's why they put rumble strips on the side of the road. Amen. Uh, because we get just too used to going. Amen? We get too relaxed just driving. If you do any interstate driving, you do any right driving on the big four lanes, uh, you'll get out there, you'll set that cruise control, and you'll get hunkered down. Amen? I headed on that trip, get that thing in there. I mean, you get your seat fixed just right, you got your mirrors fixed right, uh, you done laid back, next thing you know, you're about to doze. Amen? Uh, and thank God for rumble strips. Amen? Uh, you know why? Because they'll wake you up. Amen? Uh, they're designed to wake you up. I wonder in life how many times, how much time we spend over in the rumble strip. Amen. I wonder how many times that we doze off and we let things happen and we run, we don't see things in the road or we don't see the obstacles coming or curves coming. Why? Because we're not paying attention. Amen. 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 I remember many, 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 many years ago before we ever had children. Melissa and I, you know, we used to have a whole lot of date nights before we had children. We'd been out in Johnson City or somewhere. We was coming home. It's an old rainy night. Now, the road we live on, it's not the brightest of roads anyway. We was coming out through there. Well, I heard, we was just talking away. and Melissa said, Terry. Terry. Terry! Look, I was awake. I was doing fine. I, 
I must have had my mind somewhere else. There was a tree across the road. I, if she hadn't hollered the third time, we'd have been all up in the tree. Amen. I, hey, but I can tell you right now. Well, there's a lot of times uh, that God does the same thing for us. Uh, a lot of times He's trying to warn us uh, and trying to warn us uh, and trying to warn us. Uh, hey, why? Uh, hey, because we're not listening. Uh, we're not paying attention. Uh, hey, we need to make sure uh, that we're doing what God wants us to do uh, and staying on track. Amen. It's important. Not only would I hurt myself, but I'd hurt my wife as well. We don't realize that the things we do, the actions that we that we take, uh, could cause others to hurt as well. Uh, old devil's a very deceptive devil. Amen. Uh, he'll fill your life. Uh, full of things to do. Uh, he'll feel you get you so involved uh, in the things that has to happen uh, that you'll forget those things that are important. Amen? Uh, the very essence of it. Uh, God said and told the church of Ephesus, oh, you're doing all these things, but you've forgotten about why you're doing them. Amen? Uh, this is what the Bible says over the Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. Uh, he said, I marvel that you so soon are so soon removed uh, from him that had called you unto grace uh, of Christ uh, unto another gospel, uh, which is not another, uh, but there be some that trouble you uh, and, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Amen. Uh, in other words, the Lord said, look, it's, uh, I can't believe Paul was writing that in the Galatians there. Uh, he said, I can't believe just how quickly uh, you're removed from the one that saved you. Amen. Uh, how quickly it is that we get out there, uh, plumb away from God. And we're all spiritual. We're all saved. As far as I know, if I'm rude and I say, I don't know. As far as I know, you could be lost. I don't know. I got a 50 50 shot either way. Look here. We can act all spiritual. Well, I, we can go to church and do, go through the right motions, do the right things, say the right things at church. What kind of person are we? Somebody pulls out in front of us. Man, religion goes out the window. Good. I seen the thing the other day. Made me thought, made me think about some people I know that said had this picture of a car driving really fast and said me leaving at eight fifteen, thinking I can get to work by eight o'clock. Any of y'all in the house? I guarantee you, some y'all in the house. Now you're a real spiritual. You're real Christian-like. When somebody pulls out in front of you and slows you down, you're already late to start with. Amen? Uh, look, that's exactly what the devil likes to do to us. Uh, that's exactly the place he likes to get us in. Uh, he likes to get us mad and aggravated and upset at things that, hey, that we have no control over. Uh, I just have to, look, I'm just, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. Uh, and I guess getting behind that wheel, uh, I, 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 sometimes it's like we put we put a religion in the back seat or put it, lock it up in the trunk. Amen. Hey, but I tell you, uh, we ought to have it right in front. Uh, we ought to be riding right there with Jesus. Uh, hey, we ought to make sure uh, hey, that others see Him in us. Amen. Easy place to drift. Amen. Old devil likes to get us. He likes to deceive us and paint all these things up. Watching and listening. You know, just listening is not enough. Just going through the motions of church and going through the motions of Christianity is not church. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not what it's all about. I appreciate everybody that comes through the doors of Hell Light Baptist Church. I appreciate that. Most important thing you can ever do, though, is get saved. Most important thing besides that that you can do is live your life for Christ, not only at the church, but out there in the world. It's more important for you to live like, the, like, like Christ wants you to out there than it is here. Uh, here at the church of Ephesus, they were going through the motions. Uh, they were doing the right things. Uh, hey, but they would forgotten the reason and the person and the thing that they was doing it all about. Uh, the, uh, here's the problem. One of the problems with drifting uh, is when you begin to drift out uh, and you drift away from the Lord, uh, you allow things to go on that you normally wouldn't allow to go on. 
There'll be things happen in your house. There'll be things happen in your life. Hey, that you know good and well should not happen. Now, why are they going on? It's because you got away from God. Now, it's because we get away from the Lord. Now, hey, look, now, I'll guarantee you, now, hey, when you begin to drift and you look out there, you, there'll be a time in your life you'll look, how in the world now, did I allow these things to start happening? Now, how in the world did this thing get took place? Now, how did it take root in my life? Now, hey, well, I'll tell you how it did. Now, it's because we gave place to it. Now, we got away from God in the places that we should be protected. Now, hey, you know what God wants us to do? Now, he wants us to be on guard. Now, he said to take the whole armor of God. Now, in other words, we got to be ready now, to defend and protect every inch. Right. Hey, Amen. Don't give the devil place. The devil likes to divide. Amen. Amen. You give the devil place, whether it be in your Christian walk or whether it be in your life, whether it be in your marriage. Hey, if you give the devil place, he'll come in. Amen. He'll come in and he'll take root there. Bible, I was seen a sign a long time ago. It said, Christ adds and multiplies. Satan divides and subtracts. Amen. And that's the way the old devil likes to work. I tell you what, it's important that, hey, that we stay on top of it. Stand for God even when it ain't popular to stand for the Lord. Amen. Now, go for Him even when nobody else is going. Now, hey, when He called Abraham out to go, Abraham went out. Now, he had a lot with him. Now, hey, but you know what? Now, if God told Abraham to go, Abraham was the one that needed to go. Now, now granted, sometimes God will send some with us. Now, sometimes God will give us some. Now, Moses went out and he had Aaron to go with him. Now, hey, but you know what? Now, we'll We'll never be alone as long as we're standing with God. Amen. We're standing for Him. We'll never be alone. Yeah. Dangers of drifting. Allow things to happen in our life. Allow things to go on in our life uh, that we know good and well don't belong that. Our society wants us to believe that God would never hold us accountable for the things that we do. You know that? Our, our the world today wants to say you know what that is that's division amen that's when we begin to drift amen. we drift into another lane let me just tell you something God's here God's right here on the narrow way and if I line up with him I'm with God and then when I get over here and I start thinking well God's not what kind of God would he be if he judged me? He'd be the God that's right there. Amen. He'd be the God that never changed. Amen. He'd be the God that said he was going to. He'd be the God that said he would. I'll guarantee you that everybody in here tonight that's had kids or has kids right now, you've told your kids, hey, I'm going to whoop you if you don't quit doing that. Yes. They can't do it and you didn't whoop them. Yes. If you don't quit doing that, I'm going to whoop you. And you kept doing it and you didn't whoop them. You know why they kept doing it? Because you didn't whoop them the first time you told them they was going to do it. Amen. I, I promise you. I, hey, listen, we need to make sure that our yay is yay and our nay is nay. I, that's what the Bible tells us. I, you know what? I, when you began to drift, I, I tell you something else happens. I, no problem with drifting and allowing things to come in. I, there is no repentance. Amen. I, hey, you'll not find, you won't find a way, I, your place of repentance to going back and asking God to forgive you. Because you've drifted away and you've got your own God. You've Amen. created things your own way. That's what the church of Ephesus was doing here. They got out there and they made it about everything but God. They made it about everything but Him. Nothing wrong with having new buildings. Nothing wrong with having new things. Nothing wrong with going out and serving. Nothing wrong without having events. Uh, nothing wrong without having plays. Uh, nothing wrong with all those things uh, as long as you know and keep God in the midst of it. Amen. 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 That's what's important. A lot of times we've been talking about having revival here. 
You really want to have revival, we're going to have to realize what it is right here. We're going to have to realize what happened here at the Church of Ephesus. I, I want you to take some thought, and we're going to dig in just a little bit more. I want to keep you long. I, I want to dig in right here what the Bible tells us. Uh, Jesus said, I know thy works. Uh, I want you to realize uh, I may not know what you do. I mean, you may, to me, you are the best Christian people they are. Amen? Uh, but do you know what? God knows your works. Uh, he knows what you do when you're outside of these walls. Uh, coming into Heaven Light Baptist Church is a blessing and a pleasure for us. Uh, it is a way for us to honor and serve and, uh, and praise God. Uh, our service happens out there. Our service happens out there when we go to work for him. He said, I know thy works. I know the things that you can't not bear. I know the things you don't allow to go on. Hey, if you don't, if you didn't hear what when I read them the first time, you might ought to read them again. There's some things that you better not bear. There's some things you better not allow to be going on in your house. There's some things you better better not allow to go on in your life. There's some things you better not allow your children to hear or see or do either. Hey, I'm telling you, he said it's a good thing you don't bear those things. I think it's high time now, if we realize that we're bearing some of those things, some of those things are going on around us, then we've drifted out and we need to get back where we should be with God. We need to call seeing sin. Call it like we see it. The Bible said there, said thou was born with patience. And the name say is labored and not fainted. They kept on, they didn't buy those things, they didn't put up with that nonsense. They went out there and they continually served the Lord day in and day out. I wonder how many times that you and I go through the motion. We say our prayers, we, we ask blessings on our food, we dress right, we, say, we speak right, we don't use profanity. We do all this, but I wonder how many times we're just going through motions. Yeah. Not because of who we serve. See, it's important that people see who it is and know why we live this way. Know why we talk this way. Know why we act this way. Know why we go to church every time the doors open. Know why we get excited when it's time to go into the house of the Lord. Now, David said he was glad when he said, let's go into the house of the Lord. Now, hey, I'm telling you tonight, now, we need to get a little more excitement back in our lives. Now, if we'll get back to where we should be, hey, we'll get back, put God back where he ought to be, I promise you, things will start looking different. Amen. Here's how to know that. Over in the book of Mark, chapter number four, we'll read of a story. Or Mark, yeah, Mark chapter five, and in the end of chapter four, and in chapter number five, you'll find a story there where Jesus told his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Amen. Jesus was asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Now, if we know anything about disciples, we know anything about the disciples. <coughs> we know a majority of them made their living before Christ called them fishing, working boats, tending nets, working, being out on the sea. The Bible said there was a storm that blew up. But don't you think you boys knew what to do in a storm? Huh? Don't you think them boys had been in a storm before? Don't you think they could see it coming? Don't you think that they knew when they got in that storm what which sails to put up and which sail to put down? Or what to batten down, what to throw over? Or, hey, you know what? They tried it all. Amen. Uh, and here's the problem that they had. Uh, just like the rest of us. Uh, when storms come in our lives, uh, when things begin to happen, uh, instead of drifting, uh, instead of trying things on our own, uh, what we need to realize, uh, hey, we're in a ship with the captain. Amen. Uh, we're in the ship with somebody that knows uh, exactly what we've got going on. Uh, exactly what needs to happen. Uh, exactly how to get out of the situation. We have to remember we're riding with Jesus. 
Hey man, this is his boat. I'm in his ship. It belongs to him. He's just guiding it. Sometimes when we run over in the ditch, we get out of the way from God, it's because I took the wheel. Not because that's where God wanted me, but because I didn't let him drive. The Bible said he was in the hinder part of the ship, sleep on a pillow. What do you think he was back there sleeping for? Look, I mean, I, I can't give you Bible, and I can't, you're not going to find Bible to tell you this. Here Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship. I think he knew what was coming. I think he knew exactly what was going to happen. Here was Jesus in the hinder part of the ship. He said, boys, I better get me a little nap. Because I know these boys is about to need me. I know these boys are going to have to come and run. And I know if I'm up there in the middle of them, uh, they ain't even going to ask, amen. Uh, he said, I'm going to be back here waiting when they come. Uh, ain't you glad you serve a master uh, hey, that knows what lies ahead? Uh, ain't you glad we serve a master uh, hey, that knows exactly when we're going to need him uh, and knows exactly what we need? The uh, Bible said that they asked him, uh, care thou not that we perish. Let me ask you something. For them to ask that question, how close to God do you think they were? They had seen miracles after miracles after miracles. But I think they got used to it. I think they got accustomed to it. Just become second nature. See, a lot of times in our life, uh, when bad things happen to us, uh, it's because we've drifted so far away from God, we've got on cruise control, uh, and we just expect everything to happen in a certain way. God went back there in that ship, and he stepped out there on that st- on the on the, on the, on the stern. Uh, I believe he said, the Bible said, he said, peace be still. Uh, and even the men looked around and uh, said, who is this man uh, that even the wind and the seas obey? Uh, hey, I tell you who this man is. Uh, it's the Jesus that I serve. Uh, it's the Jesus that came into my life. Uh, it's the Jesus that I need to walk with every day. Uh, it's the Jesus that I don't want to get away from. It's the one I want to be by every day and every hour. Never head bath, never eye closed, never push your hand, never hush up. I ask you, how close are you? How close are you? Are you close enough you can feel him? Are you close enough to talk to him on a daily basis? Or have you drifted away? Drifting too far from the shore. We need to make sure we're up close. <coughs> if I ask you tonight, I'm not going to ask for a lot of hands to be raised or anything. I just want you to know tonight this altar's open for anyone for any reason. Trust Him. Trust Him. Where are you? Where is he? If he's not close, you come to the place to draw up. He said, if you'll draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to thee. In other words, all you got to do is step out, and he'll step up. Word and I, each and every one of us, are as close to God as we want to be. We're as close as we want him to be. Because you should draw up. Altar is open for any one for any reason. Whatsoever you need, come. She's gonna finish up playing right here, and we're gonna go to Lord in prayer. I hope tonight that everybody is safe. Anybody else need to come before we pray? Jason, you pray for us.
here on him for his life. We're going to sing one more place. I thank you, Lord, for love of God. I thank you for saving us, God. I thank you for allowing us, God, to have a great house of God. I pray to God to be with us, Lord God, that we would continue to go on, Lord God, Lord God, that we would always serve him, Lord God, and always listen to you. God, I pray God that you with me, Lord. I thank you, God. Fill it up, Lord. I pray God that you with me, Keep him healthy. I pray God that you with me, Lord God. Keep him, Lord God, that you with me. Yeah. I pray God that you just be with us. Help each other out there, Lord God, tonight. I pray God that you just just be with us, Lord God. Help us, lead us, guide us, direct us in our day to day lives, Lord. We get ready to go into this, yeah. this work week, God. I pray to God that you help us, God, to be Christ like. I pray to God that you just be at the, this church, Lord God. Help us continue to grow, Lord, and prosper, God. And I pray to God that you just uh, have all things in your will and your way in our hearts yeah. and in our lives, Lord. I thank you, God, for loving us. I thank you for saving us, Lord God, for being so good. Lord, yeah. Lord, for all this sweet and precious. Hey. Hey, man. We sort of appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word on your heart or a testimony before we close. <laughs> Hearts and minds clear. We'll stand to our feet. Be much in prayer one for another. Remember service here Wednesday night. Then next Sunday we'll be down at the new building. New building, unless something major happens or something must have canceled that, but we'll be at the new building. Remember, be praying about all the services, all the things coming up. We got a lot of events and things, revival coming up in October. Be praying for all these men and the singers as, as we get them uh, scheduled. Tell somebody about the Lord this week. Shake somebody's hand, tell me, love them, God bless you.